Um, but okay, uh, instead of that, maybe after queen f7, king h8, I can play something else. Yeah. I should play something like h4, h5, h6, I guess, with a great attack. But, uh, okay, after h4, at very least, I have this interesting lift for the rook. So let's say cd4. Mm, not clear, I would say. Not clear. So maybe then it was possible to take on h7. I mean, yeah, for bleeds, it was definitely good. Because in this case, I have no direct check made here. Yeah, it might be, might be annoying to realize at some point that uh, it is not this typical checkmate. Queen h5, king g8, queen h7, king here, check, knight g8, and my god. I can't get to g7, so knight h7, okay, king f7, so what? There's nothing, right? Right. Um, yeah, so not clear, that's what I mean. But after h6, you don't even need to think of this. Just play h6 and everything is more or less fine. Next move would be c4. Even better idea not to castle short here. So there is a good idea just to castle long. So you play knight c6, you play bishop d7 then, and then castle long. Because for white, it will be very hard to attack on the queen side. Um, okay. Let's go further. Let's go further. Who's here? Uh, improving player. Very inspiring name. So let's play. Sicilian. First Sicilian today, right? Right. Let's play. The smallest bishop e2 and bishop e6, okay, f4. That's kind of aggressive approach against bishop e6 move. So now as far as I remember, it is possible just to play g4, g5, then something like this. But there is also a possibility to play a simple queen d2. Followed by castling first. And then to do this. But maybe I just missed something. Maybe I just confused several lines. Okay, this knight goes to e5. Let's put the knight on d4. Exerting further pressure on black's position. I want to get to f5. <laughs> Some lines are so rarely happen that just forget the order of moves. Knight g4 is kind of super blunder because of this knight e6 followed by bishop g4. And it's time to resign. Yeah, so main problem here for black was this bishop e6. In my opinion, bishop e6 is kind of dubious move here. The accurate order of moves is bishop to e7, avoiding this uh, f4 line. Okay. Um, the question is, how soon is the stream ending? Um, I don't know. I think we have uh, around 20, 25 minutes. So let's keep playing. Let's keep playing. Uh, ocean, Ocean, O. Let's play. So there is the increment of three seconds, which means that yeah, the factor of time travel is more or less neutralized. But still, I want to play it a bit faster. So today, my main problem is playing slow, I think. Of course, there were a lot of uh, stupid blunders as well. Play with Marcin Malik. Well, 
Let me know your nickname here, Marcinelic. Bishop g5, c5. So it's a Leningrad system, so-called Bishop g5. It was very popular at times when Spassky was on top. He played this Bishop g5 quite often. Knight f3, well, uh, d5 is the main move. Knight f3 is probably not that cool. In a view of cd4, let's say. So, I have a feeling that white already has nothing in this position. But maybe cd4 wasn't the best move. Maybe queen a5 immediately was better. But still, let's exert some pressure. Let's exert some pressure on white's position. Let's say knight c6. So now it looks like a Sicilian without e4. So one of the lines. Usually there is a pawn on e4, but there is no pawn on e4 in this case. So it's kind of better version for for black. So now I guess queen a5 deserves attention. Why not to do this? Attacking c3 and bishop g5, which probably forces white to take on f6. So let's remove g takes f6. So now I have a pair of bishops, some pressure on c3, very comfortable position in general. So to play d5 or not to play d5, there is a question which is very interesting. There is also a chance just to take on c3. To take on c3, to damage the pawn structure, then to play against this pawn c4, c3, so on. Let's try this actually interesting scenario. Let's try to experiment a bit. Now there is a c5 threat, so let's prevent it. Let us complete the development. It's important to play f5 or not to play f5. First, let's coordinate the pieces, right? a4. Okay, now. Let us stop this pawn here on light square. I'm not sure I'm playing the best way here, of course. But at least I try to make this bishop passive, as passive as possible. So now let's be annoying against this a4. Let us exchange this guy. Now I have the B file, which is very important because it is the only open file that makes sense to fight for. 
So I guess rook b6 was a mistake. Now, as we can see, the rook is pinned to a4, more or less. So white's pieces are very passive. This gives me one more temple to activate the rook. Now there is a question what to do. So first, let's get rid of this vulnerable pawn. Now let us improve the position of the king. I think it will be not bad if my king occupies e5. All right. I'm not in a rush. And now I think it's time to grab material. So rook b3, attack on c3. There was a question, h5, h4, h3. Well, if I play h5, my opponent just plays h4, stopping my pawn on the light square, and potentially it might be the target for the bishop. So, as you can see, I started uh, just uh, placing my pawns on dark squares. That is the strategy when you have a light squared bishop in the uh, same color bishop endgame. That's the idea. Um, so, for white... Uh, I would recommend to pay attention to the main line with the d5. So only this makes sense here if you play Leningrad system. Because if you play knight f3, well, black has a lot of different options to not even equalize, but to achieve a bit better position. Maybe cd4 is not uh, the most precise decision. Maybe queen a5 immediately was better. I don't know. But uh, definitely black has nothing to worry about after this knight f3. That is the main problem um, for white in this game. So just too simple and uh, yeah, had no problems at all, at all sorry. So uh, let's play Redix, let's play Redix. E4. And as far as I remember, I played against Redix two times here with black. Maybe I'm wrong. Don't remember if the second game was black or with white. Bishop c5. So let's take on c6. That is kind of popular line nowadays. Queen e2. Of course, knight e5 immediately leads to queen d4 and so on. So instead... We just keep developing pieces, and now we have sort of uh, exchanged Rui Lopez. If we talk about the spirit of this position. I'm not sure that bishop g4 is a good move, but I might be wrong. I think there is no strict theory in this line. Now what about just knight c4? Multi-purpose move, get into a5, to e5. There are a lot of squares where the knight can go. But my main idea is to maneuver this knight to e3 maybe. That is my main intention here. So just play bishop e3. After bishop e3, knight takes e3. My knight gets to f5. But what I missed here is the check on b4. Yep. So most likely, I will be forced to take on e3 with the pawn or maybe with the queen. Let us see. Let us see how it works. <clears throat> f6 instead. All right. So now I guess c3 makes sense. Just preventing queen b4 check and intending to play b4. At some point grabbing the space and so on and if black castles loan for example then well d4 makes 
makes sense for sure. Just like here, because I start the attack. I just start the attack. I have to understand, however, that my pawn on d3 is vulnerable, so have to be very careful, very, very careful about it. And also black has this hook in the form of h3 pawn. There is a possibility to play g5, g4 at some point. Might be really annoying. So right now there is a threat of just taking on c4. Let's put the knight on a5. Exerting some pressure on black's queen side and avoiding this damage of the pawn structure. Now it's time to castle, of course. So let's castle, finally. Let us castle and occupy probably B file, preparing B for B5. Is it the move? Yeah, I think so. So there is the G4 idea, which can be prevented by knight E1. So I just want to keep position closed if black starts with the g4 and also protect my d3 pawn which is which is a weakness and this position looks very solid so it'll be a big problem for me to break through but I think I have an interesting resource. What about queen c5? The point is that if black takes on c5, I just take with a pawn, that goes away, I take on b7 or c6. So it's not possible to do. At the same time, it looks like a tempo move, I just blockade the pawn, which means I'm ready to play b4, b5. Let us see what my opponent will do against this queen c5 move. I could have probably played b5 immediately, but I didn't want to give my opponent a chance to play c5. That's the point. So let's play b5 now. Now a file is open. That is a very important thing. I can probably just go away with the knight from a5 at some point and straightforwardly attack along the A file. There can be also some tactics connected with this. All right, H4, I have four minutes. It's time to calculate some lines. So knight C6, BC6, BC6 is kind of interesting try. Uh, there is also knight takes B7 followed by rook A7. There is also d4 move, which deserves attention, or just simply knight c4, and also just queen to a3. And at the moment, it feels like queen a3 is the most uh, dangerous and most straightforward option. So let's just play queen to a3, attacking a7 two times now. Oh, Fuxi is here. Hello. So it looks like we have almost all followers of Chess24 here. It's very nice. It's very good. I'm really happy. G4. Doesn't mean there is no checkmate there. So let's see, knight c6, pawn takes, queen a7, k6, 
king goes to c8. Well, there is also a possibility, an, in an interesting one. I mean, just to play knight c6, bc6, and bc6. Because rook c6 leads to queen a7. And there is a threat of queen a7 followed by queen a8 with the checkmate. But king goes to c8 and runs away. Okay, what about knight c4 then? So knight c4, bishop takes c4, pawn takes c4, also looks very promising. I don't know what is better here. Maybe just to start with h takes g4 even. Is it really dangerous or not? Maybe I missed something simple here. Knight takes b7, king b7, queen a7, king c8. What is there? There is nothing. Knight to b3. Knight to b3 is also a move. Oh, let's play knight to b3. No, then knight goes to c8. Not that simple. Not that simple. Let's play this after all. This looks at least tempo move, right? Oh, with the knight. So now I can take the rook on h8 if I want. This might be just enough for a win. So let's take here. So check and takes here. So I have extra exchange at very least and attack continues. So I want to put my rook on a8 probably. h4 is hanging. Yeah, it should be winning for white for sure. Knight c4 was probably a decisive mistake. Bishop c4 was possible. And I thought that bishop c4 was the best chance. The best chance. The knight will be also trapped here, I think, after rook b2, simply. So nowhere to go. Oh, knight b3 is possible. Okay, I missed this. Let's activate the rook then. There is a threat of a checkmate in one on c8. So black is struggling. Artur Navrovsky asks, the art of calculation with I am Andrei Strovsky. Is it your job? Yes, it's mine. Rook. B6. Okay, this creates a square d6 for a king. Uh, there should be something simple. I mean, queen c8, king d6, queen d8. All this looks unclear. All this looks unclear to me, so... I'll just take the pawn on g4. Why not, after all? <laughs> now I'll just take on h4. Just a healthy materialistic approach in a position with a great material advantage. Let's say here. Let's attack a fix. So I have an extra exchange after all. That's the point. Maybe I missed something a bit more straightforward, but this also looks just enough.
no reason to make it more complicated than it is. Extra rook. A lot of extra material now. There is no attack. So let's just checkmate it. Yeah. Interesting game. Interesting game. I'm not sure that uh, there was something wrong with the opening stage except for this bishop g4, bishop h5. But I might be wrong. I don't know the theory here. I just played like, yeah, without uh, learning the classics because. There is no source of classics for this line. Uh, actually, what happens here happens nowadays. And there is no strict theory. So I would uh, probably keep the bishop on d7 here and start this maneuver with the knight d7, knight f8, knight d6, or knight d7, f6, knight f8, knight d6 immediately here. Um, yeah, just improving the knight and uh, <clears throat> uh, supporting e5 pawn is very important here. Because after bishop g4, h3, and bishop h5, well, there is a weakness on f5. I don't usually like it. Um, it was possible for me to play, uh, instead of knight c4, just knight f1. But the idea of knight g3 uh, already getting to this f5, maybe forcing black to take on f3 or to play bishop g6, which is also not that cool. Because what black wants to achieve here when the bishop gets here and h3 is provoked is uh, to be able to play f6, bishop f7, and so on. So here, as we can see, white is a bit faster. So after knight g3, bishop g6, well, there is no f6 still. And it's already possible for me to play knight f5 if I want. But maybe even this is okay. So I would say it's possible to castle then to play bishop e3. Maybe this is a move. I don't know. Castles, f6, knight h4, bishop f7, knight f5. Well, even this is absolutely playable, I guess. Queen f8. And then at some point, g6. So yeah, I go to f5 with the tempo, but that's not a problem for black, I think, because black can castle long, simply. All right, uh, let's play one more game. Let's play one more game. And uh, let it be Petit Penguin. Let's play. Here we go. H3 really. Okay. G3 now. So let's just play a what? Well, I know there are some guys playing this way. So I can predict E3, D3, C3, B3, A3. Would be nice to see this. Yep. Here we go. Let's attack something. So g3 looks tempting to attack. Let's go and attack it. Creating a lot of light squared weaknesses. Something like this. Already looks very good for black. But. I have to be careful anyways. Let's develop the pieces. Now I'm more or less forced to take on e2. But I wouldn't say I'm not happy with this because now my knight goes to f5. Everything looks just according to classics. <clears throat> and now. It's very tempting to play something like knight e4. Takes, takes, queen goes to d1, then knight f3 check, takes to e1. So a lot of interesting tactics. But once again, I don't see a big reason in uh, playing something tactical in a position where I already have a, well, maybe even decisive advantage. But might be also not correct evaluation of the position. Maybe it's still not that bad for white. 
So let's go Kuwait. Knight e4, e4, knight e4. Queen goes to d1. Knight goes to f3, check. King goes to e2 or f1 in both cases. Well, I don't have enough. So let's just keep developing the pieces. D3. Let's take it and cancel. So now I can see several weaknesses in White's camp. E3, G3. Let's attack all of them. So now knight e4 looks like an automatic move. Now it's not even a sacrifice. And e3 drops. Takes. Oh, how to finish this? Rook e2 looks simple. Knight b5 checkmate in one, right? Yep. All right. So there is uh, there is nothing to command actually. So this approach of h3, g3, f3, e3, well, probably might be a bit confusing. But in fact, well, just very very bad, creating a lot of weaknesses, making no development moves, and so on. Um, okay, so let's play one more then. Um, yeah, and this will be definitely the last one for today. Everybody who wants to keep playing against me, you're welcome tomorrow at the same time. So I will start 8 p.m. Central European time here on Lee Chats. So in general, just uh, subscribe to my channel, YouTube channel. You can see the link right under my name. So bit.ly slash Mostrovsky. It is a um, short link leading to my YouTube channel. Just subscribe there, turn on notifications, and you will be informed every time when I'm online, when I'm live, I mean. So d3, very modest continuation, very modest continuation. Let's keep developing the pieces simply. And in the show with the Rai Lopez says Kremlin student. Yes, that's true. Have you predicted something else? That was actually <laughs> the most likely scenario. Okay, let's try bishop g4. Pin in the knight f3. It looks like the improved version of bishop g4 line because Instead of completing development with the uh, rook e1, knight f1 or something, or even playing h3, white decided to play knight c4. Can be still playable though, but let's see. Now I have a concrete threat maybe just to play knight h4 at some point. 
or to take on f3, just damaging the pawn structure, and then getting with the knight to h4, attacking it. Where does Mr. Mostrovsky comes from? I come from Ukraine. Let's take on F3 now. So as I said, it feels like a better version of this famous line with Bishop G4. And just b5, right? Attacking the knight, kicking the knight away from c4 square from where it attacks e5. So that freeing my own knight g6 to maneuver. So now, king d7 looks natural. And let's play king d7. c5 was also the move. But we have an endgame stage, so why not to centralize the king first and foremost? Now after a4, I can attack f3 if I want with the knight h4, but then f4. So let's start with the bishop d6 developing move. So the point is that I just completed the development and uh, control f4 squares. Now I want to play knight h4, just attacking the pawn. All this might be annoying for white now. Because usually we, in the line with bishop g4 against exchange variation, white is in time to come up with a king f1, king e2 maneuver. Here it is not that simple. So I can play f5 if I want, and I do want to play f5 here, to be honest. I have very simple play here because I have much better development. I want to open up a f file where my opponent has a lot of weaknesses. There might be also the direct threat of knight h4 now. Because after king g3 there will be f4. And after king h4 there might be a checkmate in attack. Might be, I'm not sure. But we will see. Riddick says, but your accent doesn't sound Ukrainian. You mean it doesn't sound Slavic, right? So this typical Slavic accent. Yeah. I worked a lot on my pronunciation. That's why it probably sounds a bit better if compared to the vast majority of uh, yeah, Slavic speakers. But thanks a lot. <laughs> Rook to G1. All right. So I guess now it makes sense just to bring this guy to the attack. Just creating a sort of taking on e4 and get into opponent's weaknesses. Because rook g1 kind of stopped me from playing knight h4 immediately. Bishop e3. Okay, now if I take on e4, then f takes e4. I have nothing, so probably it makes sense, again, just to make this wait and move. Protecting g7, so now my knight is free to, to attack. Knight b7. And now knight h4 looks just almost decisive. Almost decisive, let's see. Let's see which order of moves is better. 
f4 first and then knight h4 looks very good just winning the pawn f3 or knight h4 first i have no idea what what is better actually so let's start with f4 fixing the pawn on f3 looks a bit more solid and now knight h4 just attacking f3 there is no way to protect it i guess How much is your elo, Mr. Andre? At the moment, 2442 points. Riddick says you should sound like Sasha or Kramnik. No, thank you. I would be happy to play like them, but sound like them, no. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Not my cup of tea. Oh, I missed some counterplay, by the way. Looks like that. So let's take on f3. And let's take on g1. b takes a6. Right, I guess this pawn is not that dangerous, so I can just uh, go away with the knight. a7, I just blockade it. And I have the extra rook. Check. King c7, forcing the knight to a5. Then taking on a7 and winning the game. So, uh, d3 is uh, too passive. So, against queen f6, it is much better just to play d4. In fact, this leads to a variety of interesting variations with the bishop on g5, without the bishop on g5, doesn't really matter. Uh, d3 gives me a chance to come up with a very simple development. Um, I don't think that d3 is a mistake uh, itself. Um, I think the real mistake is somewhere here, so knight c4, for instance. This gives me a chance just to play bishop g4, and if compared to uh, the bishop g4 line, not queen f6, but bishop g4, I have uh, uh, extra tempi. That's the point. So after h3, I'm not forced to play h5, for example, losing the time on that, I can take on f3 immediately. That, that is one of the uh, most critical um, differences here. So instead of knight c4, I would prefer maybe h3. Uh, instead of knight e2, maybe I would have played uh, something like bishop e3. So if you don't want to play d4 principally, then maybe just simple development would be better. Like this, knight e2, almost uh, completing the development much better than having the same with the bishop on c1. And then something like c3, maybe b4, a4, and so on. Yep playable normal position because when you gave me a chance to uh, take on f3 I already had very comfortable position here mainly because of this threats of knight h4 and so on so I will show you what do I mean uh, if compared to bishop g4 so let's say bishop g4 h3 h5 that is the main line d3 queen f6 bishop e3 bishop takes queen takes queen takes g takes um, yeah, knight goes to e7, knight goes to e7, d2, knight goes to g6, let's say rook goes here to b1, and white has a chance to play this king f1, queen e2, protecting f3 pawn normally. Everything is fine. Uh, and then b4, a4, and so on. Uh, I play this uh, line with white as well. So now you can understand what is uh, different if compared to this position. So. First of all, knight is misplaced on c4. My knight is already on g6, already creating a threat of knight h4, and bishop is still on c1. So absolutely different uh, position, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, that was the last game. Thanks a lot to everybody who joined me this evening. Uh, wish you a great uh, part of this Sunday that is still here uh, to uh, prepare for the first working day of the next week. And, uh, well, I will be happy to see you here tomorrow, the same time, so 8 p.m. Central European time. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye.